Before we get into today's show, let me tell you about HubSpot. If you're hustling in the trenches to build a business or bootstrapping one of your own, let's talk about an AI-powered tool that can lighten up your workload a bit. HubSpot's campaign assistant is a game changer for creating marketing campaigns at scale. It quickly turns your key selling points into a cohesive pitch, which helps you deliver knockout emails, ads, and landing pages in minutes. So let campaign assistant take care of the campaigns so you can get back to growing your business. Work smarter, not harder at HubSpot.com slash campaign dash assistant. Howdy, folks. It's Thursday, June 9th. I'm Jacob Cohen here with hustle writer Juliet bennett Ryla. We've got some interesting things to discuss today, and you are listening right now to The Hustle Daily Show. Later in today's episode, Juliet is going to be telling us about a bizarre $160 million art heist involving ordinary school teachers. The story actually reminded me of Dwayne The Rock Johnson and this 30 million T-Rex he was dealing with. Also, this whole Nick Cage Mongolian fossil debacle. We'll get into all that. But before we do, why don't we run through what's going on in the world of business and tech? Let's get crack a All right. So yesterday, rumors flew around of internal chatter within Roku of an impending Netflix acquisition of Roku. And the source of this chatter was that Roku abruptly closed its trading window for employees in recent weeks of the company's stock, sparking speculation of such a deal. Now, Roku's platform revenue, which includes its ad business, made $647 million in Q1. It's looking cheap also. The stock's down 55% this year, though unlikely buying Roku would give Netflix immediate access to this lucrative ad product, and it could probably integrate it pretty quickly. I will say that. But Roku doesn't just do ads. It also has physical devices. They make actual TVs. They make streaming boxes, meaning Netflix would potentially be entering the hardware game if it were to take over Roku. And that's a space it almost certainly finds unappealing. Interesting little history lesson. Get this. Back in December 2007, Netflix actually almost did that with Roku. The company was weeks away from literally launching Roku. It was codenamed Griffin. The Roku founder and CEO, Anthony Woods, was leading development of the product at Netflix. Prices were decided on. The advertisements were all shot. Abruptly, Netflix CEO Reed Hastings yanked the device, spun off the company. He was convinced it would complicate their relationship with other hardware makers, getting Netflix onto other TVs and other other devices. And almost 15 years later, barring some recent volatility, it seems like that was a rather wise decision. Netflix has a massive, strong business, obviously faces some headwinds, much bigger than Roku, though. Roku also has a strong business, but it, it faces a lot of intense competition. There are a lot of TV makers out there. Why would Netflix want to enter a messy hardware space and add more competition onto its shoulders? Yeah, what do you think? Maybe they want it for gaming. They bought all those gaming studios and maybe they want to be like Amazon Luna and they want to have their own console or their own controller. Maybe they want something like that. That's fascinating and not something I've seen anyone discuss today online, especially with just the operating system in general outside of the ads. Just having a full you know, TV operating system could help with the gaming side of things and tying it all together. That's very interesting. Anyways, in other news, some big names are leaving some big companies. HoloLens creator Alex Kipman is leaving Microsoft after some misconduct claims. Yikes alert. Mm. HoloLens is the company's mixed reality headset. Basically, super-powered glasses let you interact with digital overlays on top of the real world. Kipman joined Microsoft in 2001 and was accused of misconduct toward female employees in an insider report last month. Also, Dave Clark, Amazon Worldwide Consumer Chief, who started working there in 1999, is going to be CEO at Flexport, a logistics startup, which he, I I don't know, probably knows a thing or two about. What is more, Michigan is poised to become the 14th state to mandate personal finance education at the high school level. Love that. Credit, taxes, I think primer on those would be fantastic for the youths. I went to school in Michigan and we did not learn any of that, but they did force us to learn how to square dance, a skill that I have never once used as an adult. You haven't used that once? Nope. Not even in the South when I visited. I I keep waiting for the moment to break out my square dancing skills acquired (laughs) at my Michigan school, but 
maybe they have uh, they've heard that feedback and they've decided to do something arguably more useful. Anyway, yesterday, Spotify hosted an investor day presentation in which CEO Daniel X said he sees the company growing to 10 times its current size and that the company will be going after the audiobook space as hard as they have with podcasts. Makes a lot of sense to me. Mm -hmm. And finally, the Walton Penner family, you might recognize the name from Walmart, agreed to acquire the Denver Broncos in a deal worth $4.65 billion, a record for an American sports franchise. Sports franchises, by the way, are historically a great business. Between 2002 and 2021, the average price of an NBA franchise jumped by over 1,000%, MLB by 669%, and NHL 467% compared to the S&P 500 at 458%. And we'll see how this plays out. Juliet, I have a question for you. Have you ever seen National Treasure? I have. Thoughts? Um, yeah, I like it. That's the, that's the one with like Nicolas Cage stealing the Constitution, right? Declaration of Independence. Oh, that's okay. Well, you know, you just, I, I feel like you can't go wrong with a movie like that. Making Nicolas Cage or The Rock do something like that, it's always a win. It, I listen. It's one of my favorite movies of all time. Will always be. <laughs> but what what are you what are you going to tell us about now? I'm going to tell you about this art heist, which is currently my favorite story in the news. So let me set the stage for you. It's the day after Thanksgiving, so November of 1985. Mm. A man and a woman walk into the University of Arizona Museum of Art in Tucson. The woman distracts a security guard, and the man goes over to this painting, cuts it out of its frame, rolls it up. Puts it under his jacket. Wow. They leave. No one sees this painting again for the next 32 years. Painting in question is Woman Ochre by Willem de Kooning. He is a Dutch American expressionist. This was part of the Woman series. And this particular painting had been donated to the museum in the 1950s. Mm. But today it is worth, if you were to legally buy it or sell it, it would be worth $160 million. Oh, wow. And this is pretty common for de Kooning's work. His paintings have sold for as much as $300 million. And that was at one point the highest price ever paid for a painting. David Geffen sold it to a hedge fund investor. The painting was called Interchange. So not a, a shabby thing to steal. However, it is actually very hard to sell a famous piece of art that you have stolen. According to experts, <laughs> there's not really much you can do with it other than like try to fence it on the black market. That's a little difficult. Yeah. But it appears that perhaps this couple did not steal it because they wanted to sell it for a lot of money. Let's cut to 2017. So this woman, Rita Alter, she's a retired speech pathologist. She dies. Her husband, Jerry Alter, a retired music teacher, he has already died. The contents of their home, their, their estate, if you will, the furniture and all those items, are kind of just sitting there. An antique store pays $2,000 for all of it, takes all the stuff, puts it in their antique shop. And then customers start saying, this painting that you have here, it looks a lot like the actual <laughs> woman ogre. So... They do a little research. They call the museum. They're like, we, we think we might have your stolen painting. Uh, and it turns out, yes. Ah. Yes, they do. This painting, <laughs> this very expensive painting was just hanging on the bedroom wall of this couple's home for like 30 years. Legends. Now, the question is, did they steal it? Right. We'll never know. Really, they were never charged. They were never convicted. They're dead. So that obviously won't ever happen. But there are some clues that point to maybe. Oh, OK. The first of which being. They had the painting. Right. <laughs> the second of which being they look a lot like the people from the sketches of, of the thieves. Uh, they had they drove a very similar car. Although they lived in New Mexico, they were in Tucson at the time visiting relatives, placing them at the scene. Also, Jerry Alter once wrote a short story about a woman and her granddaughter who steal an emerald from a museum in the exact same way and then hide it in a place where only they can see it, which is exactly what this painting was doing. It was positioned in such a way that it was in their bedroom. You could only see it if you were inside with the bedroom door closed. So it's like their private shrine. Wow. It sounds like they did it, but I guess the real secret will go with them to the grave. Exactly. All right, that's going to do it for us today, folks. If you liked what you heard, we've got a lot more tech and business coverage over at thehustle.co. Our editor today is Ezra Trupiano. Our executive producer is Darren Clark. I'm Jacob Cohen here with Juliet bennett Ryla. Thanks for tuning in to The Hustle Daily Show. We're a proud part of the HubSpot Podcast Network. See you tomorrow. Hey, guys. If you listen to The Hustle Daily Show on Google Podcasts, 
We want to let you know that the option will no longer be available pretty soon. Google is sunsetting its podcast app sometime in early 2024 in favor of YouTube Music, and we want to give you a heads up before it's too late since that time's almost here. The Hustle Daily Show is available everywhere and anywhere that you listen to podcasts like Apple Podcasts and Spotify. If you're using YouTube Music, we are there as well. If you're an Android fan, there are plenty of apps like Overcast, Pocket Casts, Player FM, and more. So just search for us wherever you decide to listen to your favorite podcasts.